welcome to CityCast as we continue to bring you stories from all across the country. I am Aishri Parekh. And I am Piala Singh. And here are the headlines. Black fungus cases on the rise. Pediatricians warn that hope hospitals may not be equipped to deal with the third wave. COVID fear makes coastal residents in Kerala more anxious to move to relief camps. We start the bulletin by taking a quick look at the COVID numbers. Shantan with that. Daily new COVID cases have dropped in the last 24 hours. However, the death toll is on the rise. India reported 2,22,315 fresh cases and 4,454 deaths with the total death toll crossing the 3 lakh mark. India becomes the third country after US and Brazil to cross the mark. And in the midst of the pandemic, India reports nearly 9,000 cases of black fungus and more than 300 deaths. Our reporter Arpita tells reports from Pune where there is a significant raise in the cases. Maharashtra has more than 2,000 cases of black fungus in the state and Pune alone has more than 300 cases reported. Hospital officials in Pune claim that there is a sudden increase in cases of black fungus in May month as compared to April. They say cases have gone up from 5 to 10 cases a day to 40 to 50 cases a day. The number of mucormycosis or black fungus cases has significantly increased in the past few days as compared to what we had seen during the first wave. Majority of the patients have got the uh, disease limited to their nose but in some cases we have seen the disease invading the bone supporting the teeth as well as the eye area and in some cases we have had to do brain surgery also. With many states in the country declaring the disease as an epidemic, India now has more than 7,000 cases and more than 200 deaths reported. Experts claim that it is mainly caused due to muco mold. See, people who are highly diabetic or with weaker immunity is prone to this most. Experts say that people in the age group of 40 to 50 years or more are the most vulnerable. As the country is already tackling the rise in the cases of black fungus is a cause of concern. I am Arpita J. Kumar, reporting for City Cars. Residents in Mumbai are tying up with private hospitals to set up COVID vaccination camps in their own housing societies. Our reporter Sinchita Mitra tells us more. Ten housing societies in Mumbai have tied up with private hospitals to hold vaccination camps in their own societies. These camps are for all adult groups and for both the second and first dose. Residents say that society vaccinations are safer in regular centres there are long lines and crowds which increases the chances of getting the virus. In society vaccination camps the crowds are less. A resident says it was well organised and it helped the elderly especially who didn't have to stand for long or go to far off vaccination centres. That category 18 to 44 so availability of vaccines for that category was less so I think a lot of the youth was vaccinated because of the approach taken by the complex. Earlier, the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation allowed societies to hold vaccination camps in the housing societies. A BMC report shows 20 lakh people in Mumbai have been vaccinated since January. A private hospital says they got over 50 calls from different societies for setting up these tries. However, they could only set up two camps due to shortage of vaccines. A BMC official says whilst more societies are willing to do the vaccination drive due to shortage of vaccine, they are unable to do so. No, no not really, because it is not started uh, full-fledged. But it will help us initially. We'll be right back after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now we turn our focus to health. The Indian Academy of Pediatrics say children are at limited risk for COVID. Despite that, Pune hospitals prepare for the third wave with a focus on children. Our reporter Arpita Ajay Kumar with that story. Hospital officials in Pune say that they are working on increasing pediatric infrastructure in anticipation of the third wave. Experts claim that it may affect children under the age of 18. Though the Indian Academy of Pediatrics say children are at limited risk for COVID, though they are likely to get infected, Health officials say they are still preparing for the eventuality that some children may need more care. They say few hospitals have already increased the pediatric ICU bed capacity 
ventilators and general ward capacity by 40%. Uh, probably through the second wave of COVID, the experts have speculated third wave by the month of September, October 2021. In the first wave of the COVID, children suffered much less. It was the old age with the comorbidities like diabetes, obesity, hypertension, or any other is, uh, illnesses. The pe pe people succumbed. In the second wave, it was the young adults which again contributed. to the large number in the second wave according to a report by medical education and drugs department last year around 3.05% of covid cases are from the age group of 0 to 10 years and around 6.92% of cases are from the age group of 11 to 20 years see we have got clear instructions from the government to prepare for the third wave so first what we did is a survey of how many beds are needed to be increased and so on and accordingly we'll have to start working on experts say that it is very necessary to be well prepared for the third wave of covid uh, so as compared to first wave children are more affected in the second wave uh, and i think uh, the prediction by the experts about the third wave uh, would also turn to be correct india is already struggling to tackle second wave of covid it is very necessary that not only pune but other states also start to prepare for third wave of covid i am arpita jaykumar reporting for city cards while that may be the case with pune pediatricians in bihar people are concerned about the lack of equipment and resources our reporter amna from patna with the story hospitals in bihar are not well equipped for treating children infected with covid-19 the lack of oxygen cylinder icu beds and ventilators make the parents and pediatricians concerned for the third wave third wave jo aa raha hai iske corona ka jisme bacche zyada affect honge jiske liye bihar mein to koi bhi aisa intezam nahi hai health ka problem bahut hai head health facility utna nahi hai jiske liye sarkar ko chahiye ki hospital ki sthiti jald se jald sudhare The pediatricians in Bihar say that the parents of children between the age group of 2 to 18 years should ensure that they get vaccinated and are prepared to fight against the infection. In ICU needs incubator, warmer, phototherapy as well as uh, different uh, equipment like ventilator and suction machine uh, along with monitors. Uh, in ICU and PICU is well equipped in Bihar. Health experts say the private hospitals charge rupees 14400 to admit a patient in ICU with ventilator therefore the government must ensure that they build child care centers in hospitals to make the treatment cost effective management ho raha hai sare log lage hue hain operation karne mein do teen dino mein sara ho jayega ye sare development partner unicef aur care piramal foundation aur in sab ki baithak abhi state health society ki team in pehle ki gayi hai As the country continues to fight with the second wave of COVID, the health advisory keeps on reminding the government to be prepared for the extreme conditions. This is Amna Karimi reporting for the City Cast. Delayed RT-PCR test results are increasing stress and panic in citizens. Let's go to Puran who reports from Bangalore. The Karnataka High Court order says COVID testing lab needs to give results within 24 hours of swab collection. However, the city's laboratories fail to deliver. Labs reiterate that they are overworked and need at least 48 to 72 hours to give reports. I got my results after uh, what say three days. So when I went to so many places, the government uh, testing uh, centers, there were no people around. They went to lunch by twelve, one o'clock, but uh, we waited till four o'clock, but they did not return. The BBMP Health Department on April 21st sent out a notice that a fine will be levied on labs that don't comply with the new rules. However no action has been taken by the BBMP yet when asked about a few private labs in the city the health department refused to comment on the issue collection centers ma'am all over bangalore okay and uh, for testing only one lab is there after getting so many samples only one lab has the pressure ma'am that's why it little delayed experts have multiple times said that early testing can help bring down the severity of the infection Doctors say that by the fifth day, patients start to show symptoms, and by the ninth day, infection worsens. It is very difficult to treat such patients, and hence early testing is a must. The earlier the test, the earlier uh, uh, we come to know, and we quarantine ourselves, and mm. or we meet the nearest uh, hospital and uh, get treated. Uh, test kits are available, and this can help them. 
uh, to take the necessary precaution the labs and bpmp need to ramp up their delivery system the newly approved iisc self testing kits also called as covi shelf could be a game changer this is reporter paran choudhary for city cast staying with testing we find that police in kanpur arrested testing lab owner on charges of criminal conspiracy and for- forgery based on complaints of false reports our reporter antara gupta bring- brings you more on this Amidst the second wave in the country, cases of false COVID positive report scams are on a high in Kanpur. A private lab was raided after various complaints of false positives, and the owner, along with their accomplices in the hospital, were arrested. जी इन इन्होंने हमसे पचपन हजार लिया अस्पताल में भर्ती भी करवाई ये कहें कि अब हम कोरोना पॉजिटिव है लेकिन हम लोग को शक हुआ शक होने के बाद हमने वापस से टेस्ट कराया तो टेस्ट करने का टिकट लाया Police say that cases like these have been reported from across the city. One in which a pregnant woman lost her life after being exposed to the virus on admission after a false positive report. The private lab owner, along with the doctor and the hospital owner, have been arrested on the grounds of criminal conspiracy, bid to murder, and forgery. जो हमारे पास ऐसे चार पांच कंप्लेन्स हैं तो हमने जो वहाँ पे रेड डाला तो पता चला कि प्राइवेट जो लैब प्राइवेट लैब है वो अस्पताल से मिला हुआ है तो उनपे हम लोगों ने 307, 336, 270, 420, 120, 120 भी इस ऐसे आईपीसी सेक्शन के तहत हमने उनपे वो करप्शन के लिए बुक किया है The experts on the other hand state that it is imperative that authorities sign officials for routine checks of these independent labs to confirm their authenticity and credibility. Experts also repeatedly advise people to remain vigilant and to only get tested if one is showing symptoms. They state that this is to ensure that there is no confusion and no room for scams of this scale. This is Antara Gupta reporting for Citycast. Covid patients looking for resources on social media find it a waste of time. Our reporter Sinjana Mitra tells us more. Covid patients find contact numbers on social media regarding availability of covid resources to be unhelpful. Social media users put up contact numbers that you can call to locate ICU beds, oxygen cylinders or medicines. However, most of these numbers are unavailable or busy most of the times or the resources no longer exists. Due to this, people who are searching for these resources are unable to get any help and this ends up delaying the treatment. A friend of a patient who needed ICU beds says she called 12 numbers that she found on Twitter. We tried calling all these numbers but there were like so many numbers but they didn't work so at the end we didn't get any help from A user who puts up these numbers says that she doesn't call the number herself before sharing it. I usually get numbers from WhatsApp forwards from even people I don't even know but I share it across anyway because I believe it's for a noble cause. There are hospitals who put up updates on ICU beds availability on their social media handles. However, when people tried to call, most of the times these beds were occupied or unavailable. Doctors from hospitals say that while the information they initially put up is correct, the beds and other resources get booked out in seconds. The focus of the hospital is the focus of the patient. The manpower is placed in the ward and the patient's in all these things. So, they are not giving much attention to this thing. Social media experts say that the problem comes when people just share numbers without verifying. Call these numbers before putting them up. or um sort of check the network from which this is received experts say that people can also try calling these numbers before sharing as wrong numbers can further add stress to patients and their relatives going through covid so sanjita mitra for city cast we'll be back after another break Welcome back. From reporting on health, we move on to the cyclone Tokati. People living in the coast coastal areas of Kerala who are affected by the cyclone are anxious about shifting to relief camps. Our reporter Ratika Rana tells us about it. At a difficult time when the second wave of COVID has caught hold of us, cyclone Tokati hit some parts of India like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, and Kerala, killing about 104 people so far. Where in Gujarat it destroyed nearly 17,000 homes and blocked about 600 roads. In Mumbai it sank the oil and natural gas cooperation and barge. Almost 188 people have been rescued from the barge, along with 51 people losing their lives. While Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi announced a relief fund of rupees 1,000 crore for Gujarat, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra Uddhav Thackeray also assured the people of a relief fund, adding to which all the affected states have asked the centre government to issue a relief fund for them. This is Sajal Seth signing off for Citycast.
Residents in Kerala hit by the cyclone say they're hesitant to go to relief camps. On the other hand, authorities find they need help to operate the camps. Our reporter Roshni Nair brings us the story. The Kerala Disaster Management Authority said more than 15,000 people living in low-lying areas and coastal villages were shifted to temporary camps. They added more than 500 houses were evacuated in Ernakulam. The relief camps in Ernakulam have seen a 50% drop in volunteers as compared to 2018 and 2019 floods. Officials said people are apprehensive to volunteer for help as they fear exposure to the virus. Relief camps run by individuals faced operational challenges such as transport of relief material like food, water, donations, etc. We family members and friends. We have bags and bags. We have a lot of volunteers are in the same place, but not like before, comparatively less. If we have cleaning, we have to go to cleaning, now we have to go to cleaning. As many people are slowly moving out of the relief camps after cleaning their houses, these camps are able to function efficiently even with fewer volunteers. This is reporter Roshi Nair signing off for CityCast. Police offer help and support to those battered by Cyclone Tokte in the coastal village of Chelanam. Reporter Roshni Nair brings us the story from Kerala. Police officials say they are distributing over 600 food packets and water bottles every day to all the people who are unable to cook food. The coastal village has been battered and inundated by the cyclonic storm. The district administration said more than hundreds are still stranded without food and water. As many as 136 persons, including civil defence volunteers, were engaged in cleaning houses, health centres and schools. Police officials lined up 18,000 sacks filled with sand along the coast to prevent further sea incursion. The government has allocated funds to ensure portable water and food reaches the people whose houses have been battered by the storm. Police officials say the rescue operations will continue for as long as everybody has been rehabilitated and rescued. This is reporter Roshi Naya signing off for CityCast. After Tokte, another cyclone is going to hit the country, this time on the eastern coast. Our reporter Shantan Chandra brings us updates from West Bengal. The Regional Meteorological Center in Alipu says the cyclone Yas is around 600 kilometers away from the coast of Diga in West Bengal and is expected to turn into a severe cyclone storm by tonight. It is likely to reach North Bay of Bengal near West Bengal and adjoining North Odisha and Bangladesh coasts around 26 May morning. Thunderstorms with lightning and gusty wind of 30 to 40 km per hour and light to moderate rainfall are likely to affect some parts of Birbhum and Mushidabad districts of West Bengal. Heavy to very heavy rainfall is likely to occur at one or two places over East and West Midnapur, South Chobis Parvanas and other districts of West Bengal, Kolkata, Howrah, Hooghly and North Chobis Parvana are also likely to experience heavy rainfall. The NDRF has formed 46 teams equipped with boats, tree cutters, telecom equipments, etc. in four coastal states, West Bengal, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, and for relief and rescue operations. 13 teams were airlifted on Sunday. Let's briefly look at the man behind the Chipko movement. Our reporter Ritesh tells us about him. Noted environmentalist and proponent of Chipko movement, Sundarlal Bahuguna, passed away due to COVID-19 on 21st. He was 94 years old. Sundarlal Bahuguna was admitted in Ames Rishikesh after contracting to the deadly virus. Condolences pour in from around the world. Bengaluru city witnesses a rare sun halo during the day. A reporter Puran brings the visuals from there. Bengalurians today were left in awe as they witnessed a 22 degree rainbow halo around the sun. The rare phenomena occurred around 10.30 am. It takes place when the light interacts with the ice crystal around the atmosphere. The visual is very common in cold countries, however in countries like India it cannot be predicted. The halo seen in Bengaluru today was witnessed last year as well and even in Tamil Nadu's Rameshwaram and in Aurangabad in 2018. 
Thank you for watching. Make sure to check our online publication, citycast.in, for more such stories. We will be back at the same time tomorrow with our next edition. Do tune in.